Hi everyone, my name is Rina and this tutorial is about setting up a classic Telecaster style bridge with three saddles. And we're using my Harley Benton T20. A proper guitar setup can greatly improve the playability of your instrument, so it's absolutely worth your time. You always start with a truss rod, then go to the string action, then the intonation, and last bit is the pickup height. And in this full playlist, I've covered all the steps you need to do that. But this was for a modern style bridge with six individual saddles, so the three saddle bridge is a bit more difficult. But the only difference is in the string action and the intonation. So go here and get your truss rod ready and we can jump right in. The thing with three saddle bridges is that every two strings are sharing one saddle basically. And when it comes to the intonation, we have to find a compromise between the two strings. But there is a way to fix this all together. There are compensated saddles. Um, the nicer ones are in brass, so if you're looking for an upgrade for your guitar, maybe check out these. There's also a link in the description below. This particular guitar has been quite hard on my hands as it came out of the box. And let's see and hope that the setup will improve the situation. So before we get started, we need to lower the neck pickup and also if you have one, the middle pickup because we don't want magnetic interference yeah, between the pickup and the strings, basically. If you like your setting as is, you can use two tiny pieces of tape and apply them like this in order to yeah, save your setting and bring it back once you're done. I didn't like the setting at all, so I will just lower them with no regrets. <laughs> the first step is adjusting the string action. You will need a tuner, a capo and the fitting allen key to go right here into these tiny screws of your saddle. I think these are the tools that most of you people will probably have at home but there's more. You will need either a string gauge or a ruler that starts right here at the edge and a radius gauge. So don't be worried if you don't have any of these tools because I have a solution for that. You can head over to my homepage bandforge.net and print your own radius and string gauge in one. The best way is to use this tool with um, some cardboard support. I, I didn't do here because I didn't find glue at home. <laughs> yeah, well, happens. Um, so in case you want to build this and struggle with the instructions, there's a whole page you will print with instructions, of course, on it. You can head over to this video and skip to the part where this tool is built and see how it's done. So if you want more downloadable, easy tools like this, please be so kind and give me a thumbs up. Thanks. Okay, we have to tune the guitar. And yeah, I know I'm starting to repeat myself, but always tune up, never down. So if the note is too high, go back lower than before and tune up again. This is also true for drum tuning, by the way. So if you catch your drummer doing it wrong, you can tell them. Okay, that's close enough. It doesn't have to be perfect, not yet. And then we take the capo and put it on the first fret. Then we need our string gauge and see how the distance is between the 12th fret and the string. In this case, it's even a lot higher than the highest recommended setting I have marked for you here. So this actually means if you want a high string action, you will go with the low E string at dot 
0.065 inches and with a high E for 0.055 inches. I'm more of a lazy player, so I like the low setting. My go-to distance would be 0.05 inches in this case. Uh, for the metric people, this should be about 1.3 millimeters. It's actually funny because I'm very metric too, but with guitar things, it's easier to think in inches. I don't know why. Okay, so we want 0.05 and we take the Allen key, keep our string gauge right here at the 12th fret and lower the string in this case by loosening the screw. And I do this until the string hits the black bar right here. Okay, that's it for this string. Let's say your string action was too low. What do you do? Well, please don't just take your Allen key and raise the saddle while the guitar is in tune because the string could snap and there have been some bad cases of eye injuries. So don't do that, just, just like this. If you want to raise a saddle, always tune the string down and then raise it. Then you run no risk at all in, in damaging anything. After the low E string is done, we move over to the high E string. So it's the setting right here. If you want a high string action, you take these two. For medium string action, these two. And for the low that I like the most, we are going for 0.04 inches. It should be around one millimeter. Okay, this, the procedure is exactly the same. We lower the screw like this until we again hit the black bar. Once these two strings are done, remove the capo and then retune the two strings you've just set up. Okay, and then take an amp like this and see if your setting produces any severe fret bust. So this introduced quite a bit of fret bust, let's see. It did quite a bit, so we can hear it over the amp, I think. But it's more audible when played without the amp. This is why you should always use the amp and determine if, if you mind or not. Um, for me, I think... Maybe we should raise it for just a tiny bit. I'd say we raise it to the dot .055 setting and see if the buzz is gone. I've tuned down a bit so we can raise without fearing the string to snap. Okay, that's it. That we're good. And let's do the same thing again. Cape off and retune. Okay. So you can see that the buzz has gone completely. Let's check the high E string. Okay, like it is, we could now decide and you know what, I will try to get a setting for the low E string in between the, 
dot 05 and the dot 055. Just a tiny bit lower. Okay, let's see. And I would always suggest that you take notes of things like that so you instantly know if I don't know, if you change something, if you do any kind of mod or whatever, you know which setting was your favorite one. It's definitely a bit more buzz, but... But I think it's okay. So we will leave it here and yeah, leave the high E string as well as it was. We don't have to readjust the high E string because the difference between the, let's say, standard settings is so marginal, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and so let's see, if we don't have too much buzz on the next strings, we can leave the low E string as is and it's fine. After all, where does the buzz come from? It's usually a thing when one of the frets or more than one of the frets aren't perfectly the same height as the one before. Then we have buzz. And in order to fix this, if it's too problematic, you have to dress all the frets, which basically means that you have to send off any high frets. This is something that usually um, is a procedure that a luthier would do. And if it's really, really bad, if you can't get a setting where you don't have buzz and, and still play properly, then it's probably time to do that. And uh, I actually want to try that out myself. So if you're interested in, in things like that, more advanced and let's say uh, courageous things we could do to our guitars, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. But in the normal case, a new guitar shouldn't have problems like that. If you encounter them anyways, phone someone from the store where you bought the guitar. As you can see here, the saddles aren't parallel to the bridge anymore. This is something that you would usually try to avoid the best you can in a six saddle bridge. But here it's actually something we do intentionally because we need this radius right here in order to make the strings align nicely with the fretboard. The last thing we need to do in order to call this done is that we need to adjust the other strings. And I will use the metal radius gauge now because this is way more convenient. If you've reinforced this nice thing with cardboard, it works just as fine, it's, it's good. And here's something I've learned recently when doing my research for this particular video. I used to put the radius gauge right here and then set up the height of the other strings. But it's quite hard to put this here and hold it at the exact right height where you have just a little buzz from these strings and then still have the right height for the other strings. Um, because yeah, if you move it just a tiny bit, it ruins your setting. So what I learned is that you could put the radius gauge right here on the bridge and then this is a lot easier to hold here. For a modern Fender style neck, we need the 9.5 radius and this is what this neck has as well. And we want the low string to sit right here and the high E string to sit right there, because these are set up. And all the other strings you want to adjust just in this radius, and then you're good. When I put the radius gauge on my strings now, and push a little bit, I can instantly see that these strings are higher than they are supposed to be. So these two need to be lowered. The rest of the strings, we cannot really say anything about them. We have to, yeah, get rid of these super high strings in order to actually see what's going on. See that this one is better, but this is the high one now. So, need to come here, go this one. 
We can always plug the strings. These three strings are good. This is too low. You don't hear any buzz. Well, this could be good. And that's too low. So let's make sure this one is fine. Okay. The hard part is done. Now we again have to check for buzz. And this means we have to check every note after tuning, of course. Okay, that, that feels just here like a completely different guitar. It's, it's really a lot of a difference, really. One last thing we can do, just to make sure, is to recheck the height of the low and the high E string. If we move one saddle from parallel to a bit of an angle, the height changes automatically, it does. It doesn't have to be really a bold difference, but it is a tiny difference. So just to be sure, you can always recheck after this step. The next thing we are going to do is dial in the intonation. And the intonation does basically that this chord sounds in tune as well when you play it up here. You can hear that the waves are kind of opposing each other. You hear this shimmering kind of effect. Sorry, I don't know the English word. Which is a lot less when I play down here. Every time you fret a note, two things happen. You are dividing your string by a certain amount, let's say, we are looking at the 12th fret. This means that we are halving the string. From here to here is the same length, or it should be the same length, than from here to here. But we have a string gauge to compensate, which differs for every string. And also we are pushing the string downwards. So when you look from here, you won't have a straight line anymore, but it will go like down to the 12th fret and up again. And for this we have to compensate too. This is why we have adjustable saddles at all. But the thing in a three saddle bridge is that one saddle is shared by two strings. The most difficult saddle to set up is the one in the middle because we have a wound string and an unwound string. And yeah, they differ quite a lot in their gauge. So we make sure that one string is always a bit flat when played at the 12th fret and the other one is always a bit sharp. And if one is sharp and the other is flat, it means that the tooth is exactly between them and this is the best we can get out of this type of bridge without compensated saddles. For this step, there are only two tools that you need, which are a screwdriver and a tuner. Something else that I wanted to mention before we get started is that there is this intonation adjustment cheat sheet also available in the download section of my website. So long enough talk, let's do it. And for this we have to really take our time to tune the guitar. This means if your tuner has strobe mode, it's the time to enable it. It's even more painful to tune with strobe mode, but it will help you in the end because you will get a way better result and have more fun playing. The next thing is that you don't want to use a pick, but your thumb and really gently strum the string with your thumb and see what the tuner is doing. Oh, and there's something else to mention for the tuning. You make an adjustment and you remove your hand before you plug the string because 
you touching the headstock makes a difference for the tuning. And also, when you are doing these adjustments here for the intonation, make sure that the guitar is sitting on your lap in playing position and not laying flat on your surface. I'm doing this in pairs of strings. That should be fine. And then these two strings, the low E string and the A string are now in tune as good as I can. And we are comparing this to the same strings, but when fretted at the 12th fret. Always make sure to not do something like that. Okay, in this case both notes are clearly sharp, so the space from here to here needs to be a bit longer. We have to move the saddle in this direction. Again, here when we're doing that we have two problems. The first, we might snap a string, which we don't want, but also we could ruin the head of our screw because we need a lot of force to pull it over when the strings are under full tension. And so we have to tune down, which is a bit painful to be honest, because it takes so much time to tune them up. But yeah. So let's see, it wasn't too bad. Okay, we've reached a point here where the E string is a bit sharp and the A string is a bit flat. So we move to the next two strings. Both notes are sharp, so we need to again adjust this saddle and push it towards this direction. So we have to ruin our tuning and use the screwdriver. Oh, also sometimes this screw can be stuck here and so it's always a good idea once you're done to give this a little push just to make sure that it's fine. Okay, that was quite a lot, let's see. You can see that I'm often pulling the string when something is too high and by that I'm removing any slack that comes here from the coil on the tuner's pack. So one is sharp and one is flat now. I'm going to leave it right here and finish with the last two strings. Okay, both are a bit sharp. And again, we elongate the string. So if it was flat, you could just without tuning down, yeah, loosen the screw right here and, and push the saddle towards this direction and be fine. And give it a push. Okay. I remember a really nice stroke tuner being on top of my wish list. Um, then I forgot about this tedious process and I got this guitar instead. <laughs> yeah, well, happens. <laughs> ah, seems to be rightish. Let's let's hear it. You can hear that it's not perfect, but I'm actually always bending a tiny bit when I'm playing a note right here. It's not bad. And I think that's the most we can get out of my patience for this video. So here comes my question to you guys. Have you been through this process of setting up the whole guitar yourself? Or is this something where you would always take your guitar and hand it over to a technician so they will have to be patient? 
Okay, let's see how it plays now. I've quickly raised these two pickups just a tiny bit. I mean, I will do a proper setup. So let's see how this sounds. <laughs> Okay, I have to tell you that this guitar plays like a whole different story now. If you have seen my review on this guitar and also the unboxing, I had my problems playing it properly and I think it's been the setup. This plays nicely now and yeah, I can't wait for the comparison of the T20 and the Squire Affinity Telecaster, which will be coming up in two weeks. And if everything is fine, technically we will start with the live streams next week. Uh, you will get a notification in the community tab. So for the exact date and, and time and, and so on and the place, <laughs> I don't know if that's applicable for a live stream, but you will uh, find everything in the community tab once I have figured it out and, and yeah, did the test stream and yeah, can't wait. I'm super excited and see you next week. Bye.